Good evening. Welcome to the conversation. I am your host, Shola Adesoye. Let me begin by apologizing for coming late to the broadcast. Uh, technical hitches held us back, but now we've been able to restore you know, all things. And I am still confident that we would have a wonderful conversation tonight. I hope you guys are all ready. Um, call your friends and click the share button and create a watch party. Let's bring people to this platform tonight because the conversation tonight is really going to be hot. Co-hosting the conversation tonight with me is Pastor Shola Adebayo. Good evening, sir. It's good to be here. Good evening. He was with me last week. I'm sure you had a wonderful time. Yeah, we had know, a wonderful just, time. Just engaging mm. um, Ms. Adefila we yes, had, yes. you know, last yes. week. And that was really an amazing, amazing time. Yes, it was. You know, the title of this week's conversation is The Creative Dimension of the, the Believer. Believer. And that is so deep. Yes. That is so wide. Mm -hmm. That is so high. That mm -hmm. is so long. <laughs> and I believe that God would be redefining things in your life today. Right. So again, get everybody on this platform. Um, we'll just take a couple of moments before I introduce my guest. So yes, sir. Um, here we are again. Yes, you sir. know, what are your thoughts on this, this exciting Top topic. topic. Um, for me, I want to see how um, our guest will ex will really explore the the either boundaries or the depths and the heights, like you've said, of this particular topic. You know, going beyond just the religious expectation, but to aspects that will blow our minds and shift us to the place that God really wants us to function. That's what I'm really expecting. That's my expectation. You, you know, when you mentioned the religious aspect, yes. I, I think religion has blinded a lot of Christians That's um, from maximizing the potentials of God in their lives. Yeah. You know, for me, um, God is a creator. The first time he shows up, he is creating things. Yes. If we are made in his image uh -huh. and after his likeness, then it naturally means that the creative DNA is in us. Is in us, yes. But how much of it are we seeing? We're basically copying today, so I don't, copying, I, I don't so want to jump. <laughs> I know you don't want to jump. This is not <laughs> your conversation. conversation. But you know, we, we're just giving people time to get on board. Yes. Um, for you to get on the platform and yes. for you to click the share button. Yes. And also to invite your friends. So right now, here we go. Creative dimension of the believer. believer. And on this platform right now, I am privileged to bring up our guest, who is no stranger to those of you who have stayed with us in the conversation over the last couple of weeks. He's none other than Pastor Apostle. <laughs> well, maybe I'm bringing another. He is an apostle. An apostle is a sent one. He's one commissioned by God. That's right. Shegun Olubemi. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be back <laughs> home. Welcome, sir. <laughs> this is home for I me. I think this, this is our first connect right now. That's, um, right. That's right. And it has really been amazing. Again, thank you for always being available. Thank you. Um, it's not everyone you can pick your phone and call and say, Sir, we need you even at short notice. Yes. So we really thank you for being on board today. Thank you. And between the last conversation and now, um, he has celebrated a wedding. He, you know, his son just got married yeah. um, in Benin, and it was a glorious, glorious wedding. So we're looking at a grandfather in the making. Yeah. It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's, it's just there. It is just there. Yeah. Thank well, you. God bless you, sir. Really Thank good you. having you here. So, sir, you were carefully selected because of the depth of God's word that you bring. The creative dimension of the believer is what we're here to explore. Yeah. And here is it for me, and I began to have that conversation <laughs> with Pastor Shola. Yeah. Why aren't we seeing creativity? Especially from those who are Christians who are plugged into God, who really should be bringing out new things, new dimensions, new inventions, uh, 
witty inventions and and just bursting new things. Why does it appear as if many Christians are trying to play catch up? Whether it's in the field of science, it's in the field of medicine. You know, sir, I, I, I'm, I'm taking a little time to yeah, lay the yeah, foundation. Yeah. When COVID hit, what we heard from the church was yeah. 666. Oh. They're trying to create a vaccine, yeah. you know, that would enslave Christians is the mark of the beast. Yeah. And no one was talking about the fact that Christians themselves could have pioneered a vaccine. That's right. And mm -hmm. we know that if they pioneered the vaccine, it wouldn't have any codeine that would, you know, 666 mark mm -hmm. of the beast. Yeah. So again, there's been no response from the body of Christ, sir. Mm -hmm. This is where rubber meets the road. What are your thoughts? What, what, take us on the journey and let's gain understanding. Yeah, um, this is a very soft spot for me. Okay. This particular aspect. Mm. Um, because I think our major problem stems from the way the gospel was presented to us. The wow. way the gospel was presented. Wow. Okay. If wow. a lot of us, who received the gospel as culture, as a way of life, as, as, um, or as an ideology. You know, there's a difference between receiving it as a culture and as an ideology. And a lot of us receive the gospel as something that will save us. This is what Christ came to do in order to redeem us back to God. Mm -hmm. And why that is true, it is just half of the gospel. Wow. wow. Because <laughs> we explained something the other time we couldn't run up, which was that when redemption took place before the cross and on the cross, when the process of redemption was put in place, it mm. encompasses both the spiritual and the natural. Mm. It encompasses the redemption of all things. All things. As well as our spirit. Okay. Even then, I, 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 you know, there's just something. I'm not trying to play on semantics, but just look at, by his stripes, we are healed. Yeah. Mm. Look at the way we preach it. We tie the healing to the death and resurrection of Jesus. So we insist that a non-believer has to be saved before he can be healed. Yeah. But just Ooh. a mere critical thinking will Ooh. tell you Ooh. that stripes, stripes were laid on him before, before he went the to the cross. My God. It was, the stripes was on his back before he died on the cross. <laughs> and if it is those same stripes. And if it is the stripes that heals, then an unbeliever can be healed without by giving that his life stripes, to Jesus without having given his life to Christ. So, so you see, mm. the way we present the gospel, we present it in a way that, you know, it's all the spiritual aspect. We forget that we hold dual citizenship. Mm. Our bodies were brought from this earth. From the earth. Oh, and our spirit comes from God. So essentially, man is the interface between heaven and earth. <laughs> so man is a combination of heaven and a combination of earth. Mm. <laughs> because when up. God took, <laughs> when he brought the body out he, from the earth, man had earthly citizenship. <laughs> then God put himself into him, which is heavenly. So man, that's why a translation oh says, if any man be in Christ, it's a new heaven and a new earth. Mm. That's a translation. Yes, we know he's a new creation. He's a new creation. But you see that the first creation was an, an, uh, from the earth. The and first heaven. man. Yeah. The first man was from the earth, earthly. And the, the last man was last from heaven. The last man is from heaven. So, so the, the interface between these two made man a portion of heaven, a portion of earth. My God. Wow. So because we are a portion of heaven and a portion of earth, we do emphasize over the years we receive the gospel as emphasizing mm. the spiritual, the heavenly dimension, mm. the gifts of heaven, uh, salvation of our soul, going to heaven and all that. Wow. And then we neglect that. The in other earthly words, dimension. To, in the earthly dimension. Yeah. So the creativity that heaven has that should have been interfaced in this man so that on earth it can be useful we tend to become so heavenly, my dear, we are earthly useless. Ooh. Earthly the useless. Heavenly minded. That is what has affected our creativity. And so, and, and if you see that when Jesus was carrying out his redemptive work, 
<laughs> you just look at that the entire redemption, the, the redemptive work did not just restore us back to God. He also restored us back to our garden. Okay. Mm -hmm. And even he restored us back to the pre-Adamite world, the mm -hmm. world that existed be before the garden, which is in the mind of God, mm -hmm. which is eternity. Okay. So all that was done at the cross. Jesus did all that. So to emphasize the gospel that handles the area of the spiritual to the exclusion mm. of the physical, where your creativity is required, is an error in itself. There had to be a balance between the two so that we can be both heavenly minded and earthly useful. But once you focus everything on heaven and say, well, heaven is your home, it just happens to be that although heaven is your home, you are resident on earth. Mm. And conditions on earth affects you. Affects you. Wow. So it's the way we receive the gospel. Wow. And therefore, if we must truly depart from that way, then we must receive it afresh. In balance. Receive <laughs> it anew. Yeah. 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 And receive yes. it with this understanding that God wants us not just to be heavenly minded, good, minded, minded without making impact no, impacts no. upon the face of the yes. earth. That's right. Wow. 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 Oh wow. my goodness. I mean that in itself is is, is, is just something. As a master opener for me, I am Because if we if, because if we understand that. Yes. Then there's no way you can explain Genesis 1 and 2. In fact, in the entire scripture, the entire Bible, it is only Genesis chapter 1 and 2 that gives us you know, that gives us that snippet, a little idea into the mind of the father. Mm. What did he have in mind originally? Mm. Then you see that in Genesis 1 and 2. Okay, so, okay. so elucidate our darkness, yes. illuminate okay. our okay. darkness. Okay. So, <laughs> because oh. what is in Genesis, I've oh. read it before, okay. was in Genesis 1 and 2 <laughs> that we don't know. Okay, first of all, you will see that in Genesis 1 and 2, there was no devil. There was no, no serpent. devil. It yeah, was right there. Yes, uh, it, it, it was a clean slate. There was no fall. Mm -hmm. There was nothing negative. It was God creating all that and putting everything in place and creating man and placing man over His creation. So those are the two perfect scriptures by which nothing negative had happened, happened. Mm. until man messed it up. Now, from chapter three, man fell. Yeah. Okay. And from that fall, you begin to see the plan for redemption, the seed of the woman. That's right. So you see the plan for redemption. redemption. You see restoration, restitution. All of the re reengineering, the rediscovery is <laughs> the from, whole re from chapter three. Okay. Is from chapter three, three. to revelation. Hmm. All that is the re. So if you then want to understand how creative man ought to be or how much God has prepared for man, you need to now study Genesis 1 and 2. And then you will see that every statement, every cliche, every phrase in Genesis 1 and 2 is a type of principle. It's a form of principle that has been given to man on which to operate the earth. Mm. So you go to Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created. So then number one thing you're going to, the first thing you're going to see or to realize is that Creativity is an expression of God. Okay. Fantastic. So now to be born again, I say you speak in tongues, you do this, do that, and then yes. you, you are stupid in your head. You are misrepresenting God. My God. Wow. It's a misrepresentation of God. Okay. Because creative, if I even the way we do our services, the way we sit in church, <laughs> and all that, we should just come and just change the order. You know, because God's as one way to express God is in our creative thinking. Amazing. So he says, in the beginning, God created. Okay. So that means that, number one, creativity is an expression of God. Okay. Number two, if God is at your beginning, then your natural default is creativity. Wow. God, if God is at your the beginning, beginning, your natural default, default is creativity. creativity. Because in the beginning, he created. Mm. And there's no way he, he, he... Because when he was going to make, you see, every other thing... He, he, he just created, and you know, creativity is use of imagination to invent new things. Yeah. Uh, you know, bringing something out of nothing to be. And God created everything, including angels. He made them out of nothing. But when he was going to make man, he went to the earth to take his body. Then he reached out to himself. Wow. 
and then shared his nature. Wow. Shared himself, shared his name, shared everything he had with man by mm. putting himself in the man. And by putting himself into the man, man then became, you know, uh, sort of God on the earth right. because he placed himself in the man. Okay. Now, once he did that, you, you used the word which I love. Uh, he, he shared his DNA with us. Yeah. He shared his oh, gene with us. That's what he did. And that's why when man fell, in the New Testament, we start hearing words like regeneration. Mm. So you are now the gene. Mm. You have to be restored back to where the gene that we lost in the garden was missing, was missing. and the gene is now reintroduced. Logged in. That wow. is what regeneration is. So that's to that's a you. Regenus. So now we are regene. Now we are then can tap back into that DNA to say, my father created at the beginning. He created all things. And then you see the expression of creativity. Look at all the flowers. He didn't make them the same. same. Look at how he will plant roses, oh, the white rose, the red rose, yeah. among thorns. Yes. Look at the way he will plant this and plant that. Yeah. And, and all that. Look at the number of flowers. Look at the mountains. Look at the rocks. Look at the creativity. Look at the rivers. See the way he set out the structure of the earth. Wow. So you then see that this is your father. He's done this. Yeah. And so he loaded that. He front loaded that into the earth as a principle that <laughs> if you are in God, and you let him be at the beginning. Naturally, you should not be stupid. Because your father is not. <laughs> you should be very intelligent. You, you, you know, sir, I, I just let you run. And <laughs> because you're saying we've been regimed. Yeah. And therefore, with a regeneration and, right. and us being regimed, right. there should be a different dimension That's to our right. expressions. Now, right. I'm, I'm taking us back to pre regening yeah. Okay. So, here's a scripture in 2 Chronicles chapter 26. Yeah. It's about Uzziah. The young man who became king, yeah. tender age in his life. The scripture tells us that Uzziah prepared shields, spears, yeah. helmets, body armor, bows, sling stones for his army. Yeah. In Jerusalem, yeah. he made machines of war. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is Actually, Old yeah. Testament. Yeah. Machines yeah, of, of war, war. Yeah. invented by skillful men, yeah. those are creative men, yeah. to be put on towers yeah. and for shooting arrows. Yeah. That's, that's our first that's right. intercontinental that's right. ballistic Bali missile. Bali yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we see these things yeah. before the regime. Right. And these are Whoa. Old Testament folks that's right. That's right. who are creating that's right. all kinds of things. That's right. So, the, you see, the, the, that's exactly what I, I, I was going to come into, that one of the ways to solve boredom is creativity. <laughs> Solving wow, boredom. boredom. So, uh, those of you out there who are bored, um, <laughs> well, you're just hearing. If you're bored, here's a solution to boredom. And creativity. another way, God, had, one of the reasons God has put creativity on earth is to solve problems. There's no problem on the face of the earth that has one solution. No problem has, has one, one solution. solution. No. Just check it out. There's no problem. There, in, in mathematics, you know, you know, they tell you three ways to solve the same thing. Yes. You can go this yes. way and yes. this theory yes. and all that. There's no <laughs> problem on earth that has one solution. That's why our means of transportation has so many solutions. You can trek, you can ride a bike, you can go back. <laughs> Is it, isn't that, uh, isn't can that interesting? You can, you can do that. And you don't need to travel sometimes. You just send an email. And these days, we, you, you know, when you were in secondary school, when we were doing, uh, you know, from one, from two to five, and, and you have to write letter to your parent to say, yes. our mid-time is so-and-so time. And you have to anticipate how long it will take for the letter to arrive, so get them. and then get to them, and then send, they will send they the send money order. Mm -hmm. Or is it money order? Postal post order, order at that time. You have to anticipate all that before it gets back. Now you are, you are talking, and as you are talking, you are seeing the person you are talking to, you are chatting, or Snapchat, or whatever, yes. you are communicating, and you are getting immediate solution, answer, and then the next email tells you money has been credited into your account. Yeah. So you see that no problem has one solution. Um, one of the things God put on earth to help us solve problems is creativity. Wow. Now, when man fell, the mistake we made 
as believers, when we come into the when we came into the gospel, or somehow many of our preachers, including myself, I preached that before. Heaven is my home, and 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 it's okay. Unfortunately, I forgot I was resident on that, <laughs> and so the conditions on this earth was affecting well, me. Affect you. Yes. When there is foil increase, yes. when there is uh, whatever, you want, you want to go to heaven. You, you <laughs> want to go to heaven <laughs> because. I, but you see that although the man, mm. uh, although man fell. And came short of the glory of God. Mm. God did not withdraw all of the things he deposited into Amen. man. He did not withdraw all of that. Because they are deposited for our uses on earth. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you read a book like the, the book of Proverbs. It addresses about 29 different areas of our lives. Of our mm. daily lives. You know, just, you know, how do we do this? Work, do really relationships. Work, relationship, money, money, debt, loan, all marriage. that stuff. And then he addresses it. So if you really want to be close to God, you don't read the book of Proverbs. You read the book of Psalms. Hmm. This is what I say, what have I in my heart? I always <laughs> in against you. But you want to be intelligent and wise on that. And know how to deal with loans. Know how to deal with money. Know so, how to deal with all that. You got to read the book of Proverbs because all that he says is here on earth. So you are saying we have been reading the Psalms, <laughs> we, and we have not been reading. We, we, we've not been reading no Proverbs, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes to, to gain wisdom for living. My wisdom God. for living. So although man fell, you will discover that Solomon said, and this is interesting because we're in the 21st century, hmm. and in the 21st century. One of the uh, knowledge is what characterizes this century. That's right. Discovery, That's right. investigation, yes. and yes. all that's the yes. character of this century. century yes. If I had the 21st book of the Bible, which is Ecclesiastes, tells us all that. <laughs> He's just asking the question. He says to us, you know, I was looking for knowledge. I didn't know what to do. So I gave myself so to foolishness. foolishness. Yes. Yeah. I gave myself to laughter. I, I tried, tried many women. Yeah. I tried this. I tried that. Tried and that's the reason we, we, we have the invention of Google, of uh, YouTube, all kinds. Yes. There's nothing you can't learn on, the, on, on YouTube and on the internet today. Well, that's, that's and right. all that came in on the, the 21st century. <laughs> Oh, wow. Just the 21st we have in Ecclesiastes, which is the explanation of the fact that because the character of a century is in the book represented in the Bible. Interesting. Fantastic. <laughs> so when you now get into this, you're going to see that the character of this, of this particular century is all embedded in, in Ecclesiastes. It's all about knowledge, wow. inquisition, yeah. reducing wow. distance, yes. solving problems, Problem. yes. you know, thinking out of the box and putting everything in place. So, if we focus all our attention on heaven, then what God had deposited for the benefit of man on earth hmm. becomes unusable because heaven doesn't need that. That's the headquarters. Hmm. That's where the resources are. Hmm. But then here on earth, you need all of that. That's why creativity is needed here. So that even though man fell in the garden, God did not take back what he deposited in him. Now, that will get us to, again, taking another look at the dominion mandate. That's hey. right. Because when God spoke and gave man dominion, yeah. it was pre-Christ. That's right. Now, the assumption is that Christ brought the dominion mandate. But, you see, how do we explain the Bill Gates? Okay. And other people out there who are dominating different spheres. I mean... Elon Musk, yeah. Yeah. who Bezos. is tired, John, you know, Jeff Bezos. Bezos. Yeah. Elon Musk is tired of Earth. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to leave. The guy is looking beyond Lose here, up there. dominating <laughs> Mars yeah. and dominating other planets. That's right. And you're still finding those who are not saved yeah. expressing dominion. That's right. Oh, and those who are saved, saved yeah. are looking for dominion That's or right. how to express dominion. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's still the same thing. So, so the things that the Earth God has provided and deposited on earth. We pray for it, for heaven to answer. You see, and that's one of the stupid prayers we pray, which Money. is the reason we don't receive answers. Asking God to do what he has already done. Sure. Oh. Okay. Or asking God to do what he told us to, to do. do. That's the reason we don't get answers. And so, you know, I don't want to even go into that because there are so many foolish prayers we pray. Oh, so we'll we'll mention them. Yes. Okay. It will help. I think people out there need to know. So, <laughs> okay. this okay. segment is for foolish prayers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
<laughs> look at look, for instance, uh, we we it says where two or three are gathered, I am there yeah. in the midst of them. You spend the first thirty minutes praying that his presence will come, come. and be with you. <laughs> How just, was he supposed to answer that prayer? He just cracked it. In well, me. because I mean, <laughs> okay. Now we're then we're uh, rising up. Besides, oh Lord, we, 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 we said, oh Lord, we are going now. We ask you to go with us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake, forsake you. you. How was he supposed to answer that prayers? <laughs> now, so that's, this that's foolish prayer number uh, two. And then, and then, okay, oh Lord, uh, all my enemies in my father's side, in the mother's side, oh Lord, kill them now. Jesus said, that's not the spirit of this age. You cannot destroy whom I came to save. Hey. And then if that's the case, because if somebody had prayed against you where you are a non-believer, you should you have, have died, died, died and gone yes. to hell. Because hardly do we find anybody who did not rebel in their uh. own little ways. <laughs> and while you are putting rebellion, your father was to donate you to the priest to stone you. For the people to stone you to death. Yeah. Now your father didn't do that. Now you got born again. You pray for somebody else to die. Not giving them the opportunity to, to get born again. So God is not going to satisfy your urge and for revenge. Yeah. By not find what he came to do on the cross. By calling down fire. Oh. That's the nonsense. And, and, and a lot of time, because when the two of his disciples wanted to call down fire, he rebuked them. Yeah. So if Elijah lived in the days of Jesus, he would have rebuked him. You wouldn't have allowed him to bring fire down. Isn't that amazing? So Elijah could do what he did he because did. of the dispensation, because of his dispensation. In, in which he lived. Now Jesus said, I'm bringing a new dimension to this. No fire and funny. all of this one, you are cursing somebody, and you are, you are cursing the, the day of his birth. You curse everything, you curse. You're just walking against the scripture, and it's never honored. That's why the people you are cursing are never cursed. And they don't die. And yeah, they don't die. And then they end up mocking. And they mock you and mock say, you and you the church. Now, because we are operating outside of safety zone. I can add another one. Okay. Seek first the kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and all, all these other things. things. Then you seek other things. And, and he specified the things. Yeah. The things of this life. Yeah. Nourishment and all. Will be added. And we end up. Pursuing, yeah. those pursuing things. the things those that things. should be added. Yes, right. The crux of our prayers every day. And thinking the kingdom will I mean, now be follow us. Be, follow us. For, we, we, that's a violation of kingdom principle. And now you see the sick. He says, go heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the leper. It's a specific instruction to you. Now you go there, oh Father, we ask you to come and heal him. He already did 2,000 <laughs> years ago. He just told you to go heal the sick. Whoa. That's why Peter will say silver and gold. I have no, I have no, I no but, but such what as I, I have, have because I, I know I do have this. Wow, those those are powerful. You know, again, it's it's just such a rude awakening yes, because yes. prayer yeah. seems to be a a system that yeah. the body of Christ engages in That's now. Right. Where and I, I like maybe maybe for me, my attention is more. On pragmatic Christianity. That's right. So if you ask me to pray for 40 days yeah. and I join you, I'd want to assess the effect of the 40 days. That's right. That's right. And if in 40 days I'm praying for <laughs> husband <laughs> and husband has not showed up, yeah. then I really need to ask myself yeah. is the husband mm. coming by prayer or yeah. by pleasing God? That's right. Come on now. Be because we, we seem to just throw all kinds of prayers and Fail to realize that if we seek the heart of the Father, that's right. Jesus prayed. Yeah. But one of the most critical times was when he was at the tomb yeah. of Lazarus. Oh that's my! Right. And he appeared to be casual in his approach. That's right. I thank you because yeah. you hear me always. Always. And he called Lazarus yeah. forth, yeah. and he came forth. Yeah. You know. So while we're looking at the creation. You know, we, we love to get assumed. Yeah, you know, the, the trouble we have is, I'm back to Genesis again. Yes. This Genesis one and two. You see, God didn't. Do, do you know that there is no, play, there's no instruction where God has said to pray for Him to bless us. My God. No. Fruitful, multiply. Increase, replenish, fill the earth. So man is blessed. It was, it was an order. It was it was an instruction. B. 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 When he said, "Let there be light," it was not subject to prayer point. 
you do not need to hold vigil for light to come. Light will naturally come. So if he says, be blessed, be you, blessed are blessed. you are blessed. You are already blessed. And if you don't know how you, if you don't know you are blessed, do you realize, sir, that it was on the third day he told the earth to come out of the waters. Yes. And then later, as vegetation, the earth to produce fruit and mm -hmm. all that. And, trees. and then after that, on the sixth day, he went to the earth that is already blessed with seeds. Mm. My God. And made man's body. My oh. God. That is why oh. any unbeliever you see do whatever your hands find to do. Oh. Does not even require prayers. Because your body comes from a fruitful ground. And then the fruit, the things you are selling, the, you see them selling tobacco, sweet, everything is a thousand naira. Yes. And then in the next three months, it has increased to five thousand. Yes. Because the wood he is selling, the tobacco, everything he sells there, including his body, comes from this yes. earth. That has already been blessed. So unsaved people are prospering. They're exercising dominion. Yeah, because they know how to use And they're not praying. No, they're they not praying about it. And then we are praying. Yeah. And we're looking for dominion. That's mm. right. Which is the ignorant mm. aspect of the gospel we come to believe. The that everything is by prayers. You know, I use this, quite, uh, this illustration. The illustration of the rich man and Lazarus. You see, all the, that needed to happen there was just create an interface where they can operate. Lazarus was rich the, to the, uh, uh, concerning the things of God. Mm. And then this man was rich concerning the things, the things the on the earth. earth. So all he needed to do is to go to the rich man. See. Instead of begging him for food, say, please teach me. Teach me how, how to, to, to be to, wealthy like you. Yeah. And the rich man we'll say, me okay, what, show me so the God way. Me. And then he shows him the way. He teaches him the that interface produces the same thing. Righteousness on both sides. On, on both sides. Now, in the bosom of Abraham that he was, I say he died, Lazarus died. I was thinking to the bosom oh, of Abraham. Right. It was a man who knew how to operate there and here. The same Abraham. Abraham, the same Abraham, Abraham. knew how to operate there and here. He had a relationship with the father. In fact, the father called him. He's fine. Yeah. And then, at the same time, he was so, so rich. rich. He was, saying, he was blessed in flock, sheep, You know, because goats, God cattle. did not intend that we practice or believe one or walk towards one to the exclusion of the other. Because oh. we hold dual citizenship. Okay. And, and that's why your relationship with the Father, and that is why your body is not sustained by, biblical, by Bible verses, by quoting scriptures. <laughs> by preachers preaching to you. That's not what keeps this body. This is the fruit of this earth. It is the mango, the tree, the yams, <laughs> the things we play, the vegetables on this earth. That's what sustains this body. Mm -hmm. But the food on this earth does not sustain the spirit. spirit. So you need to know that as you go into church, as you fellowship, as you do that, you feel the spirit man. But the natural man, the man of the flesh, this physical body, and your mind has to be fed by information here. Hmm. Because by the time we, are, we, we become, you know, we, are, we transition from here, we're at home with the Lord, we're not going to need this. It's not suspended, it's totally aligned with the spirit. spirit. So the soul and the spirit are the same place Just. or to the worship of Jehovah. But if we are here, that's why you need this place. You need Whoa. information. Whoa. You need creativity. And then you need the food of the earth to feed to this feed the body. body. Because the most important asset you have on earth is not your spirit, it's your body. Ah. That's what keeps you here. Because the moment your body dies, you become disembodied spirit. Yeah. You are out of here. You are illegal on earth. So you'd be stupid to say you are only reading, reading. We go for fasting, sir. 30, 40 days. We've done all. Done and it some all. people We're have died. And, and some people have died. <laughs> died from fasting. Because you're trying to feed the spirit to the exclusion of taking care of the body. Mm. And, and, and that's exactly why, you know, the people of this earth, you see, we thought that when man fell, God took everything away. He did not take everything away. He kept man from the way of the tree of life because now he's eating the wrong seed see, and he doesn't he want to that, that, that tree so he doesn't live forever doing evil. And there's no redemption. That's all. And now, he took him out, but the wisdom, the knowledge of relationship, God, God did not teach him how to sleep with his wife. He discovered that. Uh, <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> I mean, I know this is X-rated. So yeah. there were things Adam had to discover. Oh, he has to discover. Before the fall of man in Genesis 1 and 2, yes. knowledge was by revelation. You yeah. couldn't know unless God reveals. 
But once man fell yeah. from that superior knowledge, mm. he came down to the realm of, of six, six uh, yeah. of, of yes. five, five senses. senses. Because actually, we were created with six senses. You know that Satan promised to give him a sight, give him a different <laughs> yes. and then yeah. what yeah. he did was to go for his spiritual sight, by which he communed with God mm. and the angels. His ability to see in the realm of the spirit, hear the spirit, talk the spirit, feel the spirit, and, and go in and out of the spirit. So that Adam was in the garden, but you couldn't tell whether he was in the garden or the garden was in him. Mm. Because any time he wanted to be with God, he was with he God. Was. He wanted to be with Jesus, so he wanted to be with his wife, he wasn't. Ah, so he was in and out of the garden. So it was in the garden, the garden was in him. It was he going was in just and out. Because the soul and the, bo and, and the spirit were right, the same united, yeah. But the body, with, the body, he made contact with the physical world. With the spirit, he was in the spiritual world. And then he was, you know, having all of these experiences. Now, as soon as he ate that fruit, we can spend the whole day talking about <laughs> it. But, <laughs> but as soon as he I, ate I'm that, still going to touch he, something. He, man became, I mean, man was downgraded from six senses to five senses hmm. god could not have made man on the fifth on the sixth day with five senses hmm. it has to always be no, on the, the, the sixth day the six senses so the that, sense that was lost that dim yeah that, that, that dimension that spiritual sense ability to see the uh, invisible to feel the intangible and to hear the noble operate in the, both worlds you 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 use the word hmm. adam had to so to oh, thinking man. about the sexual life, he had to discover. The, so it's, it's not as if God gave him a manual. No. Step one, step two. Now, this is where I'm going. If he failed to discover, that's let's, right. let's imagine that he was praying in the spirit. Oh, that's Lord. right. That would have been the end of humanity. That's right. So it was his discovery that's right, that's that right. has that's brought that's about, right. about <laughs> 7 billion people on <laughs> the face of the earth. <laughs> You know, you know, you know. The, I like the way the King James put that word. <laughs> because see, and Adam knew, knew his wife. He knew his wife, and and that word is usually the, you know we have these two two types of knowledge: the yes. Western, which has to do with you know the laboratory testing and all that. Yes. But we have the Eastern, which has to do with intimacy. Intimacy. So he had to discover that there are certain activities that were required. Hmm. To, 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 to fulfill, to fulfill his mandate. Yes, <laughs> you replenish know, the earth. You know, you know, I, I pastored churches for so many years, and I've seen some stupid <laughs> prayer points. And okay, so we're back to prayer points. Well, well, you know, I, no, you know, no, came to me. One of my members came to me, and uh, they've been married. The husband was in Port Harcourt, and they were, and she was in Mina then. And, and every now and then, the husband comes in, spends two days or three days, and then he's gone back to court. And then, hey, Daddy, please, uh, hey, we have been waiting. Nothing is happening. I said, what? How? <laughs> they say, ah, you know, nothing yet. I know that. I say, where's your husband? He says, it's important. I want you to pray, you know, that it will happen very soon. I know that. Now, this is how they put pastors in problem. <laughs> God. You, what are you telling me to do to pray to that pray. what will happen? That what will happen? Your husband is, and I received the word of the Lord. In fact, those are the fastest prophetic order. God says the Lord grab it, your husband. <laughs> you will be pregnant. for something to happen. Get out of here! Don't disturb. Don't waste my time. Oh my God! <laughs> and the next time the man was on the phone, are you stupid? And dead? What your wife never to come to me for prayer? But get get, get yourself over here. And by the end of the month, uh, the Lord has the Lord has answered. Wow. Stupidity <laughs> so, that sadly finds its way into fire. you know the fabric of our of our Christianity, yeah, and, and so that's that's where the plague we, is in the head. The plague is in the head. Mm. It's in the head until uh, we have dealt with that issue, whereby we know that although we're falling, you see, you see, the benefit of the redeemed man now, the regenerated man, is that he has the opportunity to discover. And then the opportunity of having revelation. Okay. He has that benefit. Wow. Because man, since he was getting all his knowledge by revelation, then it has to be revealed to him by God, by reason of relationship. Because God brought all the creation to him to see what he would call them. Whatever he called them was the name. Was the, name. The, the margin of that place says that was the name God had in mind. Hmm. So he, he man was, was so able to read. Plugged into God. Plugged into God. He could read God's mind. And now he fell. Now he couldn't read 
all of God's mind as a fallen man. So my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your ways. As a fallen man. Wow. But that did not degrade or repudiate or, you know, downgrade this intelligence that God gave to him. Because now he has fallen, henceforth he became, knowledge became by discovery. Searching. So through search. search. So you will see oh. that Adam and Eve could have used electricity in the garden. <laughs> they could have used electricity. They would have used helicopter. They would have used private jet. Okay. And when I say this, they would have written everything down, documented everything. Yes. The, what they don't know was stealing benefits from them. Mm. Okay. So, and then somebody say, how could Solomon have used electricity or David? And I ask you, how do we generate electricity? Uh, solar. There's, there's hydro. So, hydro. Solar is, is okay. there. Okay, yeah. hydro. And then there's wind. Mm -hmm. There's coal. Solar. There's uh, um, gas and all that. Which of them came after Adam and Eve? Which of this oh, means of yeah. generating electricity came after Adam and Eve? Well, seemingly all of them. They were here yeah. before. Bef they were there before. before but they Adam were not came. discovered. But once you don't discover that... Coal was here. Coal was here. Water Once you was don't here. discover, then you are deprived of the benefits. Ooh. And it's not God. So while they were in the garden, electricity, electricity was there. Electricity was there. They could have made clothes. They could have done anything they wanted to do that we're doing now. So God is not keeping us up and saying, well, it is 16 something, and this was discovered. It wasn't God that kept us. When Da Vinci was beginning to sketch his work and began yes. to talk of electric, uh, uh, you know, flying, flying when objects, um, oh. Isaac Newton was yes. talking about, I mean, when Laws he of said, motion. you yes. know, and when he was, uh, they were having this um, debate with uh, Voltaire, the French, uh, the French you yes. know, guys, it is who said, well. and then he was saying, if the Bible is true, man is going to fly someday. Wow. He said, if the Bible is true, man is going to fly. Wow. We will yeah. defy gravity. Wow. And then, you know, Voltaire, who was an atheist, said, it's only religion that will have made first-class scientists like Isaac Newton to be so stupid and believe that man will fly. Wow. A couple of years down the road, we now know who was really stupid. It's stupid. Because we have the law of gravity, but we also introduced the, a, law a higher lift. law. And then once we can introduce the higher law, aerodynamics, flotation, lift, <laughs> and then we are able to fly. So what we don't know is robbing us of what God has given to us. I said I was making a research, and I discovered that in, in just a clap of thunder, they said there's enough power there to power New York for two years. Hmm. Just a clap of thunder. Lightning. That lightning. Lightning, lightning. yeah. And now we're told, in fact, I was studying that, and they said, they said, in a slice of bread, there's enough, you know, energy. Yes. If you can break the atom and all that into, yes. there's enough energy to power an ocean liner. And some of us have eaten so many slices. So many slices of bread. <laughs> we're not even powering ourselves. We're not powering ourselves. <laughs> oh, you know that Inability oh, to geez. discover what God has eaten in creation is the bane of oh. humanity. You know, again, so, so you, you've, you've taken us back to, you know, back in time. And it is proven that the early scientists that brought a lot of innovation to society were either believers yeah. or they were Jews. Yeah. Today, let's look at New York yeah. as a city yeah. Yeah. and look at the economy of your New York. That's right. Is in the hands of Jews. They are they are Jews power New York. They are plugged into the pre-gened yeah. DNA. That's right. And they are using the same dynamics. That's right. In order to control the That's economy. Right. I mean, right. whether it's press, media, and all of that, they've got their finger in it. So again, something happened to us. I, I can't. Yes, sir. I, I can't just depart from the fact that. We got it wrong. We got it wrong, sir. Look, the whole idea of preaching redemption, without going to Genesis chapter 1 and 2, is doing a lot of havoc. Because if you see in Genesis chapter 2, look, I can preach for a whole year in that, those two chapters. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says, God planted the river in the garden. Yes. There we go. And a mist from that water came, came to water the ground. For the Lord God has not yet caused it to rain upon the earth. Because hmm. there was nobody 
to till, to, till the to manage the outflow of rain. So God is saying, if that is the principle of the scripture, right? <laughs> if I cause it to rain, then you're going to have too much to deal with, and you are too few to handle to that. It. So I'm going to wait until you, you can, can manage it. You can manage it. And, and, and so you see that God created a system whereby it's, it's, the, it's called the management principle. If you can't manage something, you will never come into it. Wow. Wow. And then wow. God caused that. But, sir, God created a garden, made a man, and he placed the man in the garden. Hmm. What's the typology there? What's he supposed to tell you? He tells you that every human being that will come through this man called Adam, born to this earth, we always have his own garden. Garden, clear. Now, if you're going to have your own garden, you need to go and study how the first garden operated. God planted a river. Therefore, there's no one that comes to this earth without a garden and a river in the hmm. garden. Okay. There is a stream oh. that God has planted into you that you feel like this is it and this is it. This is it. I meant for this. This is the stream by yes. which I need I, I will be fulfilled. Well, I went into this, I went into that, but I know that I have something here yeah. on the inside of me. Yeah. So that river is there. Hmm. But when you read down, the Bible says the river parted into four, four heads. heads. The question is why how does Hidical. a single river Part into four heads. Well, a river parts when it meets with an obstacle. Hmm. So when there's an obstacle, once you plant a dam or an obstacle on the path flow of a river, yeah. it will divide into two. So the things we see as obstacles, obstacles. challenges, are actually meant to bring out the creativity in, in us oh, to multiply the, parting, the rivers. Parting parting of the, the rivers. rivers the inside of us. Wow. <laughs> That's the path of creativity. Oh my goodness. Well, I hope you're still there with us. If, you, if you're just joining us, this is the creative dimension of the believer. My co-host is Pastor Shola Adebayo. Pastor Shegun Lugwemi is here just blowing our minds Absolutely. as his manner is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that is his manner. Now, thank you for what you said. So, I want to read some names so people would know because we must be stirred up to really grasp this. These are names of committed Christians who are great scientists. Okay. Robert Boyle, if you did physics, yeah. Boyle's Law. Okay. Um, we have Michael Faraday, yeah. Yeah. electricity. Yeah, right. They were committed people. Just to mention a couple of them, um, Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton, yeah, okay. Was a protestant yeah. who spent time on Bible study, wow. maths, and physics. That's wow. Right. So I hope you're listening to this. You can search it out yourself. Bible study, maths, I mean, and there, physics. there's so John Dalton, Dalton's atomic theory. That's right. Okay. That's the father of nuclear physics, yeah. so to speak. You look at George Washington Carver. He was that he improved the agricultural right. economy right. of the U.S. Florence Nightingale, yeah, a are, respected uh, nurse, yes. humanitarian work, Alessandro Volta, yeah. the electric battery. Yeah, that's right. I can go on and on. Blaise Pascal, yeah. Yeah. binomial coefficients, yeah. probability theory. Yeah. I mean, these are people we read while we were in school. Yeah. It goes on and on yeah. and on. Yeah. Now, suddenly, it looks like they paid their dues, yeah. and we're looking for the next generation yeah. of scientists. Yeah and inventors yeah. from the church, yeah. and yet we are chasing money. That's right. So if we're going to get it right, it's time to, um, not just stimulate our brains right now, it's time to, to invest okay. into a new generation. Wow. wow. And then our investment has to be in preaching a balanced gospel. Which is the full gospel. The full gospel. Letting them know that they are here or not. You see, when this is what you get when you preach escape theology. <laughs> okay. And you see, uh, they, they circulated something recently. Uh, recently, I said 35 things you need to know about rapture. 75 things you need to know. I told some people, I said, do not, I will block you if you send that thing to me. <laughs> and, and, and I will add this. A pastor well known recently said, rapture is going to happen in three years. Yeah. 
If it doesn't happen in three, it will happen in six years. Yeah. If it doesn't happen it's in six, years. it will not surpass ten years. Yeah. So here we are again with an escape theology. That's right. So there's no need to go to school. There's no need to go to school. There's no need, yeah. to, there's no need to be there's creative. No need to there's no need to, there's write no need to research. Write Jesus a book. Soon come anyway. Ten years max, it's going to be back. So we're just there, lay back. We're not going to do what we need to do. We're not going to study because, you know, the whole... Uh, and I said to somebody, if Jesus was coming to pick you up, let him meet you doing some. Exactly. Let him meet That's you. Yes. Let him be doing some. Yes. You know, <laughs> I, I shared a funny story that happened. This was 1984. 83, 82, no, 85 or 86 or something. We had just finished our retreat, and the last message on the retreat was, Behold, he cometh. <laughs> and, and, I, and, and behold, he cometh. And, um, and we got back home, and there was this guy, the wife said, Okay, we finished this, is March ending, April, rain has started falling, let's go farm. He said, Behold, he cometh. <laughs> He said, but we did. If he come at, we're going to eat it. <laughs> let's, let's go. So, he, before he comes at, Why do we said, go to, 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 to farm? To farm, and they were do, And eventually, the woman came to report to him, please talk to my husband. He said, brother, he said, you know he's coming very soon. I know that's it. By the time we were, <laughs> the harvest was going on, he still come at. Oh. No food, food to eat, yeah. and he hasn't arrived yet, <laughs> and the stupid man is still expecting it. So you see that when you preach escape mm. theology like that, you know, it, it, it doesn't... And, and, well, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to go... I don't want to mess up people's theology about rapture or anything. I, I don't want to take it away from whatever you believe. But I just want to drop this. The last time Jesus taught about this, us to pray, he, he didn't say... Pray that heaven will go to, I mean, earth will go to heaven. heaven. He says, your will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Here. Therefore, the kingdom of God is not so much as getting the earth to go to heaven, as, as it is getting a, a heaven, heaven to, to come, come to earth, to colonize the earth. Even when he prayed for the disciples, he said, Father, because the disciples were expecting that they would go with they him. They would go with him. He said, I'm leaving. No, uh, no, no. 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 Uh, these ones I said. These ones, here. yeah. I am going, but these ones are the world. Just keep them here. And then when you get to Revelation chapter 21, and he began to talk about the holy city that is coming like a bride. Yeah. I, I, I thought when you hear holy city and a bride, right. when you hear of the bride, your mind should quickly go to the bride of Christ. Mm. And who is the bride of Christ? The church. Mm. When he talks about holy city, he said, Behold, I said to you, as a city that is set on her. Mm. Your mind should have gone there to say, You are a city that is set on her. Uh. And the city of God was not going to heaven, it was coming, was coming down. out coming of heaven. Down. In fact, I like the way uh, the, the, the message uh, put that revelation, uh, uh, you know, revelation, you know, chapter 21. He said, he, I said, and I see that Holy Spirit, the bride coming to the, he said, look, look, God has come into the neighborhood. My God. I like that. He said, God has come into the, the neighborhood. neighborhood. My God. Because his, his name is Emmanuel. Not just to the earth, and but the neighborhood. And then I heard a voice saying, the tabernacle of God, God. is with men. He didn't say the tabernacle of men, men is, is with God. God. Why don't we just, for the sake of, okay, for the sake that we might be wrong, because we will be saying he's coming for ever he hasn't arrived and if you say i come quickly <laughs> and yet he hasn't arrived after two thousand years yes. if you say that quickly does not mean the quickly you thought it meant yes, exactly. <laughs> or a, day, a day with the lord is like a thousand exactly. years so uh, so you need to understand therefore that if he hasn't come two thousand years after why don't you bring what is operative in heaven here on earth and Philemon began to, uh, Paul began to talk to Philemon. He said, the communication of, of your faith, faith is effectual by the acknowledgement of the things that are in you. Oh, so what are the things in you? They say, so are you, you acknowledging you, it? So, so if, you, if you don't understand the things that God has deposited in you, then you're just going to hang in there. Why will God create, a, 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 create us without our intellect? We thought when we got born again, then he suspended this day. Or suddenly he you supernaturally change your head, change your intellect. You, you, but if you don't know maths before you go born again, after you, you go born again, you, I submit you, you won't know maths. Yeah. And you are not still going to be intelligent if you are stupid before you got born again. But then, if you begin to understand the power of the, the redemption benefits deposited into you, you begin to say that we may know the things that are freely given to us. Begin mm. to say, Lord, you gave me this. Mm. That was why 
even pre coming pre regeneration you find the, the when 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 the kings of this earth are looking for people they are not looking for people who are fasting and prayer and pray they are looking for people who can speak science who understand science wow. who can talk the delivery mm. who can deliver in the language of mm. the people mm. and so he said to them i want you to see children in whom there's no blemish daniel He's not talking of those who doesn't have who don't have sin or who are he was not connected, he was a Gentile king. Yeah. But he's talking of a good looking young man. Hmm. If you have your beard, make sure you trim it and keep it neat. Hmm. And if you are going into the place where like, Je like Joseph, you're going to meet Pharaoh, Pharaoh. And, and you don't have then you, you shave your hair look clean. I must change and your then, garment. And then, and then change your garment and be good and be smart about your dressing. And then he got them, he said, they have to understand science. They should be able to speak in the language of, of the, the Chaldeans. Chaldeans. You don't go to boardroom and say, Praise the Lord. <laughs> because that's not the language of that's not the language of the boardroom. Some, so, pe some people do. Okay, so so if you truly, <laughs> if you truly want to really mm -hmm. tap into your creativity, you know yes. your creativity that and do that critical thinking, then you are going to ask yourself, how do I begin to speak the language of the field in which I operate? Yeah, the language of the field I operate. How do I begin so to speak? My field has a language. It has a language. I mean, if I'm talking with a theologian, there are words that I use. use. That immediately I say oh, that he, he knows, knows where you're coming. He from. knows where I'm coming from. But if, but when I want to talk to, his, uh, you know, I've had the privilege of training some people because we run a small company where we train personnel and all that. And I don't go there to speak those languages. I speak the language of the boardroom. Hmm. I speak the language of networking. I speak of language of sustainability and hmm. all of these languages that you know that are that are languages unique they understand to those fields. unique to those fields. So, if you, therefore, how are you going to then become creative if you just sit back and all you read is the Bible? It's good to read the Bible if that is where your calling is. Yes. But again, I do not think, I think the Bible is our reference material, and I think that's where we are ministers of the New Testament, but I'll be stupid to read only the Bible. No, we're having a conversation with, with, concerning you during the week with one of your pastors. And then, and she was uh, telling me, he said, he said, when you, when I talk with you, you, you can engage anyone on any field. He said, that's how Pastor Shola is. He said, with Pastor Shola, you can talk to him on any field. He has an idea. Yeah. Because if you are not universal enough, if you are not open enough to greater knowledge. But that's, that's deliberate. How do you, it's, it, you had to build that. I decided that years ago. You had to build that into you. And so I read a bit of medicine, a bit of science, a bit of geography, history, politics. Deliberate, relevant. Deliberately. That's right. It's because, an intentional Because thing. you're going to be speaking to and connecting with different that's kinds right. of people. That's right. So, sir, would we say that a lot of people don't read and study and think why? Because they don't see themselves going that far is your reach. generation reading now we're yes, back to here yes yeah. like, that's because what i've seen now here because they, I, I call them the ifb generation, generation yes. i follow I back. back yeah okay um my generation um a girl's dad bought her a ferrari and she posted it on twitter the hotel dollars, the hotel dollars. Yes. And it had it has been trendy it, it has been it bust some people have been yeah. disfathered and their fathers yeah. and yeah. In fact, the guy said that Father's Day next year is for the other the lines, not for any, any father on the face right. of the earth. I am wondering what is... So you can see the value system? You can see the value, yes. So somebody made the Ferrari, and somebody in Nigeria bought the Ferrari. Yeah. Where our generation is not thinking Think yeah. about making about the Ferrari. Making the Ferrari. That's right. Sir, please talk to my generation. Where are we missing it? Because you've said a lot of things. I don't think we've been struck by the escapist theology I think there is something about everything ends here. Mm. There is just something that makes everything so micro that, okay, I have to get it done now. And it's making us not creative, especially in Nigeria. So, so it's not creativity now. It's just, I want to get rich. I want to look rich. But the sustainable aspect of creativity that keeps you wealthy for a long time has really been thrown into the bush. You know, what I think is um, the major problem I've thought about this for many years. Yes. I'm still thinking. And uh, a great deal of my study is thinking. Okay. Mm. Because when you think a lot, you philosophize. You look at life differently. Absolutely. Yes, and, and then you see things differently. 
One of the things I have found is the value system that has been corrupted. Mm. The value system that has been corrupted. Um, I, 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 some years ago, I was in, in um, Ben. I was in Zurich. And I was going through the streets. And I would see a very short street, a short close. You see, Joseph Fadwell. 17, 14 to 17 days. Yeah. This one, every street had the name of somebody and the years they lived and died. I mean, the years they lived. But, yes. So that if you suddenly go to Google and ask about that person, he will tell you what he did to improve that community wow. that gave them, you know, that wow. made the government. Immortalize them, yeah. You know, that impetus to immortalize wow. them. Wow. And every one of these people, uh, the last time I checked up, I had a f uh, f uh, history has been scrapped. From, yes. Yeah. So that an average, you know, young person, young person in their 30s don't know anything about our law. Don't know history of Tawafa, Balewa, they don't know anything. They don't know Antonio and Auro, uh, who moved for us to go for independence yes. and all that. A couple of days ago, a young man was saying, ah, where, where is Save Nigerian group? And I, I said, you are very stupid and don't talk around where I am. <laughs> and if you think a pastor shouldn't use that language, then you need to ask God to forgive me. <laughs> I said, Tude Bakari was, uh, I mean, he was involved with, um, Pastor Bakari was involved with uh, Save, Save Nigeria. Nigeria. Group. I said, that guy is, in six, is 65. Yes. Um, Professor Walesho Inka, he's 84, 85. Yeah. Um, and all these people in their 70s, in their 80s. And at that time, they were in their 50s, 50s. thereabout, and 60s. I said to him, do you know when, did you know when that man, Shoyika Road, and the man died? <laughs> and he was in prison by Nigerian government. He was in his 20s. When Aulon was just 30 something, he was prime, he was already uh, premier of, of, of the West. Southwest. When Anthony and, and Ahuru moved, that would go for independence, he was 26. Is that 26 or 28? When God, and then when here God, you are. When, and when God, God became head of state. He was, he, he, he was 29. He was, he was 29. Yep. And the, the, also, I said, you, all you go about is you snapping your beard on the Facebook. <laughs> Get out of here. Because they have no value system. They when don't when are you going to start your own movement? When I, I said, when are you, you going to start, start your own movement? movement? You expect me now in my age to carry placard We no go green. I said, instead of that, I sell everything I have. I move my family out of the country. <laughs> if <laughs> you carry it me, then it's your future that I've is paid, I've paid Whoa. my dues. I paid my dues. And these are the young generation that are saying power must come to us. To power must come to young, us. One of the to ones that the young made, must rule. One of the ones that is made governor. Who never campaigned, never did anything in um, uh, this neighboring state, Kogi state. state. And I just see his voice that he's stealing that state blind. Some workers have not been paid for three years, two years. So you see that is the value system, the value system that cele celebrates a uh, hush puppy, sudden wealth, sudden riches, flaunt their their looks and all that on the internet. These are the value system, but children that have real values mm. who still imbibe the things we're talking about, they're intelligent. They're thinking. Okay. They're trying to make a change. I have mm. a couple of young people right now. One of them told me, sir, I have an application that I was praying and this came to me. I want to develop this and I'm working with I told him this, 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 what we're going to do. How will I supervise it? Mm. Go for this application. So we are speaking to some young, dangerous men who have, who have decided to restore themselves into the path of value. Rec recently on this broadcast, we brought Mr. Emmanuel yes. Evodahe. Okay, yes. And he was introducing a biblical game that he had created. Now, he's approaching 60. Yes. And so... A game developer, you can imagine, can you approaching 60 yeah. and is creating a game. Yeah. And you are asking, where are the 17-year-olds? You know. Where are the 18-year-olds? Where are the 19-year-olds? During this uh, coronavirus, a 17-year-old boy, you know, developed a website in the U.S. And he did so well, he was putting up, and he, 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 he put some, some meters and all that, reading everywhere in the world, the countries of the world. Yeah. So if you click on it, 
all of the feedback they're giving, all of the reports the they're giving, yes. everything is, is all synchronized. And then you just click on it. This guy now became a major, his website, you know, had so much of it that it became a reference point, point for United Nations. One head of the no, 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 using his website to track the, the, the coronavirus. 17 year old. So, sir. Well, there's a book that I have on my shelf. It's called The Black Man's Burden. Okay. There's another book called The Black Man's Curse. Is the black man cursed? No, I don't think so. I don't believe it. I've never believed in that. I don't know do, because if you get, you just Google inventions by black men. Black men. Yes. And you will see them later the all over. From the, the air condition we yes. use to the comb yes. to, you know, refrigerator to whatever yes, it is. Yes. In fact, before the, the June things, you know, where, the, where in Alabama, you know, where the whites burnt down, you know, the, you know, the, where they had a place, the, the place was called uh, uh, the Black Wall Street. Yes. Wall Street. Wall Street was Because down. they had everything going on. There was nothing that New York or any major city could boast of that was not running there. Okay, sir. Is the African man cursed? No, the African man is not cursed. This is our value system. This is our value system. And the value system now is trying to, and that's why our politicians can't perform. Because the value wow. system is just keep, you know, we just come worship them, you run after them, yeah. and then you want to get something for nothing. And that is why today it appears as if, if you are a diligent worker, even as a minister, sir, yeah. you've been ministering for several years, I've always known you to be preaching the gospel and all that. After so many years of doing that, because you see that we can win by righteousness. And to do things the way it ought to be done, you are seen as, you know, never do well. Absolutely, not yeah. Because everybody wants shortcuts. Shortcuts. Wow. But I have never seen where shortcut pays on, on the long run. No, no, on no, no way. way so, so, so let's let's try and we're coming to the end of this conversation so, gradually. What do we need to do? Well, I put some things down. I don't know. Uh, I, I, just thinking, you know. Yeah. Like what, what do we need to do yeah, to I, allow this, I think know. I think the very first thing is, is, is uh, maybe that is the only thing I will actually say, is doing what you have just said now. The question goes up. Everybody needs to ask himself, what do I need to do? So hmm. ask questions. Ask questions. Wow. Because I now need to go back and sit back and I say, what has God planted into me. What do I have here? What do I have here? Because do you know that when that river was parting, the Bible said the first one that parted, it went and exhumed gold. It was just on it just, earth thing, just on earth all kinds of things. Gold. We began to see minerals coming out. In other words, every river planted into any human being is capable of bringing all the wealth he needs on earth. Hmm. If I don't put worth, this is the first thing, but I put, you know, on earthly resources, assuming yes. these things out, then I'm going to get that. That's why Jesus did not promise you, he didn't promise you treasure on the field. The man went to go sell everything, he bought the field. He bought the field. So you buy into the kingdom, and then the treasure gets uh, released oh, yes. to you. Okay. So now, you, my, I will ask the hard questions. You know, because the river planted in, 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 in David... It was a single river, leadership. But it started by taking care of the sheep, sheep. the shepherd boy. Then he found that with the experiences of lion and the bear and all that, I could write song about these. He wrote song. Yes. Then he said, instruments. If I'm, if I, he began, if I'm writing these songs, I they might not sing it the way I want it. Learned instruments. instruments. Began to play. Then from the instrumentation, he started arranging it. That's why he would say to the son of Asap, when you're going up to Jerusalem, to this. He, he, so the song he, of ascent. He, he, yes. Ascent, sort of, yes. sort of descent. So this guy was a composer. He was a singer. He was an instrumental. He was an arranger. And then when it came to dancing, <laughs> so in all the fields, and you know that in music now, all these are different fields. Yes. The dancers yes. are different from composers. Yes. Composers are different from singers, Indusers. singers, and yes. instrumentalists. Yes. You're touching something else. One man, shepherd. Yeah. Composer. Songwriter. Songwriter, yeah. Arranger. Composer. Yeah. Arranger. Yeah. yeah. Instrumentalist. Yes. Pro producer. Producer. Dancer. Dancer. Warrior. Yeah. 
No, I, I, I've not even gotten there. Because when you get to that dimension, you're going to see that he was first an errand boy to the field of battle. Yeah. Then that inspired him to want to fight. Yeah. And then he was going to run. He was going to now begin to fight and then became Amod Bearer. Then from Amod there, Bearer. go become the captain of the guard. From there, have his own I mean, From there, became the general of the army. Then from there, he became... So before he became a king, look at how many streams that there was seen administrative in. skills when look, he becomes king too. I mean, all that, all that flowing in one man. He's a mentor. The, the, he's a mentor. He's so, a builder of men. So to say something is, uh, what, what do they call these people who go to encourage people? Uh, motivational speaker. He's a motivational speaker. The guy was discouraged. <laughs> and and he motivated. To, <laughs> so he governized himself and encouraged himself in the Lord. And afterwards, the people that wanted to stone him also cleaned their eyes and I followed him. Followed him. Mm. So when you see this guy, the same river flowing in him. Wow. And then you see that way. I really don't know what to do. I just say, get out of here. Ask the right question. Mm. Because if you don't get your question right, you will not get the answer right. Mm. The size of your question is the size of your answer. Mm. If you ask, how do I get 10,000 naira tomorrow, that's all you get. That's but if you ask, how am I going to be an inventor, or how do I change my generation, then that's the answer The answer comes. You see, there. So you need to sit down and ask yourself, because when I want to embark on a project, when the Lord is speaking to me, I want to do something, I want to do programs and all that, I, I, I first of all sit down, as I pray about it, I say, Lord, you're speaking to me about this. Then I go sit down at my table, and I'm now asking the right questions. Hmm. What do I need, need for this? this. I put that. Uh, who do I need to work with to get this? I put them down. How do we accomplish it? I put them down. The, out of all of this, which of them do I have? Mm. Then I put down my resources. These people, who are the people I can talk to that won't make excuses? Mm. Who are the people that I need to persuade? Mm. Who are the people that I can trust with this? My, so I'm, I've not shared my, this vision with anybody. But, I have done all this for the next two weeks. I am working on this thing. So when I come to speak, I can engage you for the next three hours because mm. I've done my homework. Wow. So if you don't ask the right question, how are you going to change your generation? Man. You well, can, critical <laughs> thinking begins with the right question. Critical thinking begins with the right question. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. We've got just one question as we bring this conversation to close. My, my. Ethics is principle in the creative sphere. Some contradict some perceived spiritual principles. Where is the nexus for the Christian in the creative sphere? I uh, doubt if any principle will contradict spiritual principle. Hmm. We, I, 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 there's no creativity, there's no principle. You know, principles, to be a, you know, you know we say a lot of things, like this is a system, it's principle, it's a law, you know, without testing them against anything. Hmm. Okay. Okay, okay, so I've written 10, uh, 12 ways of testing any law. If it's a principle, if it's a law, it should be able to pass those test, tests. Uh, I think I wrote that in, in my book, Red Flags. Yes, Red, red you know, Flags. If, if it is a principle, number one, it must be universal. Yep. The, it must have universal application, application, white, black, all over the world. Okay. Number two, if it's a principle, it must contain inherent judgment. That means if you don't observe that principle, it has a way of punishing you. Wow. If you don't respect the principle, it has a way of punishing you. Then that principle must protect the product. In other words, the law of, the law of gravity, we know what it does. Mm -hmm. It protects you. And so when we're seated, we can't fall down because we're because seated. We're seated. So, it has to so to be a principle, it has to protect a product. And then there are, you know, other, other ones. So you see, some of the things we say are principles. If there are financial principles or creativity principles or whatever, or creative principles, they cannot contradict the principles of the scriptures. Because the scripture is our reference point. Yeah. And you cannot see anyone practicing, whether it's uh, Bezos, Bigay, Dangote, you can't see them practicing anything outside of the principles, principles. that are laid in the that's, scriptures. That's right. You know, I asked some young people, if you, if Dangote gave you opportunity, offers you 50, uh, 20 million, 30 or 50 million, and then offers opportunity to stay with him for one year, which you, will you take? <laughs> An average person says, I go for the money. For the money. <laughs> My mama no born fool. I'll just go straight for the money. And guess what they're going to buy, sir? iPhone 6. iPhone, first of all. I, I, iPhone 11. 11. iPhone 11. <laughs> 
Uh, 12, 12 is on his way okay, up. 12. Okay. <laughs> they're going to buy Samsung Ultra or 20s and all that. That's what they're going to go for yeah. and all that. Whereas, if you don't take the money and you stay with that man for one, one year. year. Oh, boy. You learn, you learn the principles. Oh. You're not going to spend another year without becoming a millionaire. That's right. Because all he has learned all his life, he will deliver to you like that. Yeah. One year. So that what took him 30 years to learn, you can get it in Shut one year. It. That's where the problem is. A value system that, you know, want to get it, don't want to work for it. Mm. So you offer them money and offer them time with you. You know, I used to say this. I've seen the young people who say, please, sir, and, and they want to send me questions. They say, I want you to mentor me, mentor me. I say, well, I've been mentoring before. I don't have mentor. Oh, I want you to mentor me. And, and I say, okay. Then the next thing, so, so in what area? Another thing. They say, ah, sir, if God is leading you to send me 1,000 naira credit. <laughs> now, you see, mentoring has nothing to do with money. As far as they're concerned, it's about, it's about money. It's about get something. Get now. something. So they call you father. I yeah. want you to be my father. But the father is actually is a meal ticket. Is a meal ticket. So yeah. there's no way you're going to. Do. So the principles are universal. If all truths are parallel, whatever you find them, whoever is practicing them, yeah. just they are all parallel. Wow, they cannot contradict each other. Well, thank thank you so much, sir. Thank we have you. a couple of comments that reflects uh, what our viewers have gained from this conversation. Amarachi. Ukeka. Man is the interface between heaven and earth. We're a portion of heaven and earth. Talatu Ishaya says, if I'm not creative, I'm misrepresenting God. Yes, That's right. powerful. Yeah. Gabriel Adoga. Man is God's shared nature to planet earth. Right. Rasoska Adetunji, if God is at my beginning, then right. my default mode is creativity. Togo Emmanuel, one of the ways to solve boredom is creativity. Yeah, that, right. that, <laughs> that is powerful. And I said, if you are bored, yeah. that's an answer that's to you. solving boredom yeah, for you. Right. Damilola Ojo, I have been regimed. Mm. I should be creative because my father is not stupid. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted to say something that I won't say. Okay. Mm, <laughs> some earthly fathers may be stupid, yeah. but the heavenly father it, is it, not stupid. Nah, right. Ilchesh, <laughs> what you can't manage, you can't come, come into. into. That's right. Powerful. Sunday Udo, innovation is a competence. Yeah. It can be learned. Yeah. Wow. That is really strong. Yeah. Damilola says again, the size of your question is the size of your answers. Hi, yeah, yeah. Sir, oh, we can't thank you Ooh. enough for another explosive time. Ooh. I mean, <laughs> well, but, but what is coming now? Loading again. <laughs> Because we, we truly are not even done with no, this. Yes. We were just cracking yes, this off. And, and we look forward to coming back again. Yes, ma'am. You know, Pastor Shegun, you've been a great, great blessing. Absolutely. Great inspiration. Absolutely. And we appreciate your coming on this platform. This is home yeah. for you. And um, you have permission to ask me to retire from uh, conversation. Uh, oh, you can take it over. Oh, please. Um, <laughs> Pastor Shola is here. If you don't need me anymore, <laughs> oh, he can please. become the anchor. <laughs> I mean, I'm just... I told, you go, I told you you're going to lay hands on me and pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> and tell uh, me how you dig out your questions. Sir, who knows? You, you can see some of them here, too. <laughs> uh, the one who needs laying on of hands knows who, who should lay hands on him. Oh Thank you for your modesty. You. And wow. for all of you who joined us yeah. tonight, again, I know we came on a little later mm. than normal. But I know that it's been an amazing and life-transforming conversation. Oh Thank you gosh. for joining us. Thank you for your comments. I know there were many more comments that were posted. Thank you for sharing the page and for inviting your friends. It is just a great joy for us to sit down here and to be a blessing to you. From Pastor Shola Adebayo. Yes, sir. Well, it's been a great one. See you. At the next conversation, we shall have this week. So it's we're back again next week. We want you to join us on Sunday. Yeah. We began a journey on Sunday, mm -hmm. and we're looking at uh, your instrument rating in your walk of purpose and your navigational skills. And we're going to continue on Sunday. Pastor Shego, Maybe one one last word to the people, a bye bye, a greeting, or something. Well, join us next time, and uh, especially on this platform, it's a very rich platform. 
is. Now I always say that to you that everything shared on this platform is rich. Thank everything you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Well, from well, me to you, have a lovely evening with your families at home. God bless you and have a wonderful weekend because tomorrow we hit Friday. God bless you richly. God bless you.